So in the last video, we added this form that you see on the page that allows the user to select one of the options that are tied to the question, and they can then click the vote button to submit that request, to submit their vote to the back end in Django, and Django now needs to handle that request. So it's gonna send a post request to Django, and we are now gonna write the handler function or the code to handle that post request in the back end. So this is going to be our first example of handling user input and sending user data to the server and having that data stored in the database. So let's go back to the Django tutorial and we can go to the section just below writing this minimal form and we're going to look at this code here and it's for one of the Django views that we have in this application and that's the vote view. And this view is ultimately what's going to be called on the back end when we click the vote button and submit this data to the server. So let's build up this code here and we're going to do this by hand. I'm not going to copy and paste this because I think to understand this fully, it's maybe better to write this out by hand. So let's go back to views.py and it's this vote view that we're going to target here. Now what we need to do is take the question ID and that's coming in from the URL as we've seen in previous videos and we need to use that ID to get the correct question. Now we already did something similar to this with the detail view here. So we're gonna copy this here and we can paste that into our new vote view that we're gonna build up here. So we get the question by calling the get object or 404 shortcut method. And we pass the ID lookup here based on the question ID that's coming in from the URL. Now that's gonna get the question out of the database. And what we want to do then is get the user's selected choice from this form. Now I'm gonna show something very important in Django just now. So what I'm gonna do is print something to the terminal and it's gonna be request.post. This is what's called a query dictionary in Django. It's very similar to a Python dictionary and request.post contains the key value pairs from a post request that's been sent into this view. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the front end here and let's select yes to this. And if we click the vote button, we now get taken to this page for now. Let's go back to VS Code and have a look at the terminal. So what we have inside the request.post query dictionary that we're printing out is the CSRF middleware token, that's one of the keys. And importantly, we also have this choice key on the right hand side. And the value here is a list containing the number four. Now the number four corresponds to the ID or the value, sorry, for this particular option. So if we look at the DOM here, we can see it's got a value of four. So whatever option we select, the value of that option is gonna be extracted inside the Django view, and we can get that from request.post. That's a query dictionary, and that's because we've sent a post request from the form. So in order to get the actual choice, what we can do here is get a variable called choice, and we can remove these brackets here, and we can index into request.post and get the choice option here, and that's gonna give us the value of four. So that is actually a choice primary key, so let's store that in a variable called choice PK. And then we can try and get the selected choice from the database. And I'm going to encapsulate this in a try accept block. So selected choice here is going to be equal to question.choice set, which remember refers to the set of choices that are associated with a given question. In this case, the question that we pulled out on line 27. And what we can do here is get an individual choice from that choice set. And we want one where the primary key is equal to that choice PK that we pulled out on line 28. Now, if we go to the Django documentation, they have this try accept block here. I'm gonna copy the accept block and we can paste that in here. So we're looking for a key error and also the instance where the choice that we're trying to get above does not exist. So we've got a couple of things to fix here. Let's start with the import of the choice model. We're gonna import that from our models that we defined earlier in this series. And then after we've done that, what we need to do is move this look up here into the try accept block. So I'm gonna do that just now. Basically, we're looking up choice inside the request.post dictionary, but it might not exist, in which case we would get the key error. So in the case where we have that key error or on the line after that, on line 31, where we try and get a choice by this primary key, if that doesn't exist, we're gonna catch that exception in the accept block here. And what do we want to do in the accept block? Well, all we're gonna do here is return that render and we pass request to that as always. And we're gonna pass in the detail HTML template here. So it's polls slash detail dot HTML. So essentially what we want to do is we want to send the user back to this page here 
if they select an option that actually doesn't exist. And that shouldn't happen unless the user is up to no good and trying to programmatically send an option that doesn't exist. We have a form here that contains all of the available options. So it shouldn't exist if we have a normal user that's not trying to do anything malicious. But in the case where we have a choice primary key that doesn't exist, what we can do is just send them back to detail.html. And we're gonna add a context dictionary here. So in the context, we're gonna have two keys. The first one is gonna be the question itself. So we're gonna map that back into the dictionary here. And we got that on line 27 above. And the second key I'm going to add here is an error key. And let's actually call that error message. And that is gonna be, you didn't select a choice. So a simple dictionary here with a question and an error message, and we can attach that to the render method. So now if we get to this accept block, we know something's gone wrong. We're just gonna send the user back to the page here, and that's gonna be this page here. So let's refresh this page, everything is still working. And what we can do now is handle the success case when we have a choice that we've pulled out of the database that is attached to that question based on this primary key. So when we do get that choice, we can add an else block here. So try except else in Python is a way to define logic where you try and execute some code. If there's a problem, you hit the except block. If not, and all is good, you can go to the else block at the end. Now, what do we want to actually do when we have a valid choice here? In other words, when the user selected one of these with a value, and then we go to this line of code and we pull a choice model out of the database using the dot get function. Now, the choice model is here and it has this integer field called votes. When a user votes for a given choice, we want to take the existing number of votes, let's imagine that that was maybe five, and we want to increment that by one. So from five to six, and if we had, let's say 222, we want to make it 223. So this is a simple increment operation on the number of votes attached to a given choice. Each choice is attached to a given question as well. So what we need to do here is we need to take our selected choice and we need to increment the votes by one. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take selected choice dot votes and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it equal to something here and we're gonna use what's called an F expression in Django, which we're going to explain in a second. And we're gonna add one to this expression. Now we need to import something from Django. So at the top here, I'm going to bring in an import. And let me do this right on the very top here on line one from django.db.models, we import F. And as it says here, F is an object that's capable of resolving res references, sorry, to existing query objects. Now, essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take the existing value of votes in the database and it's going to add one to that. And at no point, if we use this F expression here, are we going to pull the value from the database into the Python code. So in Django, an F expression allows you to reference the value of a model field directly in the database instead of pulling it into Python memory. And that's useful if you want to perform updates or comparisons without race conditions. Now I want to explain race conditions very briefly. Imagine two users reference the exact same field at the same time. So we have a choice model here and let's imagine that the number of votes is 22. And then two users come along at exactly the same time and they pull the value 22 out from the database in this operation and increment it by one. So both operations send the value 23 as the new updated field. Now that's a problem because two users have incremented the number 22, so the value should be 24. But because each user pulled the value 22 out into Python memory at exactly the same time, that increment operation did not work as expected when both users applied the update. Now, one way to prevent this is to avoid the pulling of the value out into Python and instead do the update directly in the database. And that is essentially what this expression allows you to do. That's what F objects or F expressions allow you to do in Django. Now, if you want to know more about F expressions, we did a video in the Django ORM course on this topic. So I'll leave a link to that just below in the comments. Now, once we've updated the votes field here, we can call the dot save function. That's gonna send the SQL to actually update the votes to the database. And that will then save that operation and increment the number of votes for the choice that we have and that we've voted for on the front end. So what we want to happen now is that when we vote for yes, we want to see that value go from zero to one or from one to two, because we are voting for that choice and we want to see the number of votes incremented when we do so. Now there's one last piece of code we need to add to the view. So let's go back here 
And as it says, we need to always return some kind of redirect after successfully dealing with a post request. And that prevents the data being posted twice if a user hits the back button. So essentially, when we submit this form here, we need to redirect the user after the processing of that post request. So after we save our new selected choice updated field, in other words, the vote field, after we call save, we want to redirect the user. So how do we do that? Let's look at the documentation just now. And Django has this HTTP response redirect that we can use. So I'm going to copy this statement here and we are going to need to bring in a couple of imports and let's paste that in here. So we need to import the HTTP response redirect and also the reverse function. So let's go to the top here where we have the imports. Now from Django.HTTP, we're going to remove the previous HTTP 404 and let's use HTTP response redirect. That's a difficult thing to say in a Scottish accent and I can't even type that here. Eventually I've managed to type that and the last thing we need to do is import the reverse function from django.urls. We can now go back down to our function here and remove this final line of code that we no longer need. And what this final line of code is essentially doing here is redirecting the user after the post request has been submitted and the user is being sent to this URL here and it's the polls results URL. So if we go to urls.py, it's this one here. You can see the path with the question ID slash results. Now, what we're using reverse for is to refer to the named URL, and that allows you to refer to that in a Pythonic manner, and it's got the same benefits as the URL template tag that we discussed in a recent video. Basically, if we were to later on change this URL to something else, for example, if we add XYZ at the end, as long as we're referring to the named URL in our views and any, anywhere else in our Python code, that is going to still work. We don't need to update a million references to that URL if we've hard coded it. Instead, we can just use the reverse function and that is going to work fine out of the box. So let's go back here and fix this URL. And we're going to try this out just now. So let's submit the answer no here and click vote. And notice that we're now taken to the results page. We're looking at the results for question one. Now this is currently a dummy view. It doesn't do anything except display this message. But what we want to do, of course, on the results page is we want to show how many votes each option attached to that question has been given. For example, we've just voted for no, so we would expect that number associated with that option to be incremented by one. Now to finish this video, we're going to change the code for the results page. So we need to fetch the question again inside the view. So let's go back to views.py and we're going to copy this code that we've now copied a couple of times and we're going to paste that into the results view. So we're basically fetching the question by the ID that's passed in via the URL and we get back a question model from the database as we did before. And what we're going to do is remove this hard coded stuff that we had before and I'm going to copy the render statement from the detail page and let's paste that in here. And for the results page, we want to, up to update detail.html and instead we're going to define a new Django template called results.html. And again, we're attaching a context here that contains the question that we've pulled out of the database based on the ID in the URL. So let's now define results.html. I'm going to bring back the sidebar here and let's go to our templates directory inside the polls directory and then we're going to create that results.html. And if we create that, we can now go back to the Django documentation and they have some sample code here for results.html. I'm just going to copy that and we can go back here and paste that in. And let's have a look at what this is. Again, we've got the header containing the question text and then we have an unordered list here and a template for loop, very similar to what we saw before. And it's taking the question and it's looking at choice set.all. So basically getting all of the choices that are tied to that question. And for each choice, we have an LI tag here. And I'm going to separate this into new lines so we can see it better. And we render out the choice text followed by a couple of dashes here and then the number of votes, which remember is available on the dot votes field on the choice model. And then we have this interesting statement here. We have the text vote and then inside a Django template variable, we render out choice dot votes and then we use the pluralize template filter. Now I will explain what this does in a second. Let's just save this for now and go back to the results page in this application. When we refresh the page, you can see the results. So we have the question at the top, is Django better than React? Yes has zero votes, no has one vote, 
and not sure has zero votes. Now what the pluralize filter is doing is essentially taking the value for choice.votes, which can be any number, and based on that number, it's gonna pluralize this text here. So just to demonstrate this, if the number is zero, we're gonna have votes. If the number is one, we will have vote because that is not to be pluralized, and that's what the pluralize filter does. If the number's two, it's gonna be votes, and same for any number after two as well. That is always going to use the plural form of the word vote. So that is essentially what the pluralize filter does. And we can actually see that if we go back to the user interface just now. The option with one vote has the text vote here. All of the other options have the plural form, which is votes. And we actually did a video on the pluralize filter as well. I'll leave a link to that in the comments and you can look at that in more detail. Now, if we click this link here to vote again, let's now vote for the option yes and we get taken back to the page and we can see that this option now has one vote. And if we do that again, we now have two votes. And again, notice the pluralization now that we're up to two. So we've now given users the ability to vote in this form. That vote is sent to our Django view, which then processes the data, saves it to the database and redirects the user to this results page. And we've seen some new constructs in Django in order to facilitate that. For example, what we have here is an F object, which performs a database update directly. It doesn't pull out the value into Python. So that's one thing we've seen. We've also seen the concept of redirecting users after an operation has been performed. So this is an HTTP response redirect to this URL here. So it sends the user to the results page. And if we go over this workflow one more time, inside the view that handles the post request when the user submits the form, we fetch the relevant question from the database and then we extract the choice that the user has made on this form that we see here. For example, which one of these options they have picked. That is extracted here on line 32. And we use the value that's been extracted here inside the statement on line 33. And that is taking the question and looking at all of the choices that are tied to that question. And we try and get one with the given primary key that we've pulled out from the posted data. And if that works, we go to the else block Otherwise, we have this exception block here where we redirect the user just back to the detail page where they can try again. Hopefully that will never happen. But what happens in the happy path, we go to this else block and we take the selected choice that we've pulled out of the database and we increment the number of votes by one using that F object. And then we save that and that effectively sends the SQL to the database with that in place update operation here. And finally, once we've incremented the number of votes, we perform the redirection and the user is sent to the results page where they can then browse the results of the given poll, as you can see here. So that is essentially it for this video. We're gonna move on in the next video and we're gonna look at something new in Django and that's class-based views. So that's coming up in the next video. If you want to support the channel and you're finding this content useful, check out the coffee page that we've got linked in the comments just below the video. And thank you very much to everybody that's contributed so far. It's greatly appreciated. And if you want to support the channel, we've also opened memberships as well. And thank you very much to everybody that's joined the channel so far. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And the link to this full Django introduction playlist is just below in the comments. And you can check out any previous videos if you're finding this useful. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.